I'd like to shift gears now and talk about another aspect of R and S naming that we haven't discussed yet. What, what have we figured out how to do so far? Well, now we know when we're given a stereo center, we know how to decide whether it's R or S. If we're given a diagram, we can figure out whether it should be named R or S. But you're also likely, on exams and homework, you're likely to see the reverse problem. What if you're given the name, how can you draw the correct stereo center? For example, suppose you're told the stereo center is R. How can you draw it so it's going to come out to be R? Or suppose you're told the stereo center is S. How can you draw it so it's going to come out to be S? That's the reverse of the types of problems we've seen so far. Um, but that's another type of problem that's very common uh, to come up on exams and homework problems. So let's try some examples like that. Let's consider s 2 iodobutane s 2 iodobutane Try to draw a picture of this molecule that accurately shows the stereo center. Butane means four carbons. One, two, three, four. Now, on this number two carbon, we need to put an iodine and a hydrogen. So on one of these bonds, we need to put an iodine, and on one of them, we need to put a hydrogen. But how do we know which one we should put it on? Um, well, the key to this method is just take a guess. You should not try to figure out from scratch in your head what S would look like. That's too confusing. Don't try to figure out from scratch in your head what S would look like, uh, unless that's easy for you. Instead, we're just going to take a guess. And if it's not right, we'll fix it. So it is right. That's the whole basis of this method. We're just going to take a guess as to what S will look like, and if it's not right, we'll fix it. Uh, well, the easiest guess is to put the hydrogen on the dash because we know it's always easiest to find the configuration if the number four priority is on the dash. So since we don't know where the hydrogen goes anyway, we might as well guess that it's going to go on the dash. All right, so we've guessed so far that this is what it looks like. Now we can see whether we're right. If this is how we draw the stereo center, what would be the configuration here? Well, the iodine would get the number one, the hydrogen would get the number four, these two carbons are tied, the carbon on the right is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. The carbon on the left is attached to three hydrogens. So the carbon on the right gets the higher priority. So this is the number two priority, and this is the number three priority. Okay, and we purposely put the hydrogen on the dash to make our lives easier. So now we can see what the configuration of the stereo center is. The configuration here is going to be R, clockwise. So did we make the right guess? No. It turns out we made the wrong guess. We guessed that the hydrogen goes on the dash and the iodine goes on the wedge. It turned out that was wrong. But it's no tragedy. We can easily fix this so that it'll be S. How can we fix this so that it'll be S? Well, here's where we go back to that single swap rule that we learned a long time ago in this series of videos. Remember that any time you make a single swap, you automatically get the opposite configuration. Any single swap automatically gives you the opposite configuration. Well, we know that this configuration is wrong. It's R. So how can we fix it so that it'll be an S? We can make any single swap. Now, you can swap whatever you want, but I think it's really easiest to swap the iodine and the hydrogen here. I think those are the ones that seem most logical to swap. So I'm going to, um, first of all, let me erase these numbers here so we don't get confused by them, the dots. All right, so again, we've just figured out that when we draw the stereo center like this, it's R, and that's not what we want. So, um, we're going to swap the iodine and the hydrogen. We'll put the iodine where the hydrogen used to be and the hydrogen where the iodine used to be. And now we know, because we believe in the single swap rule, that this must be an S configuration. Um, now, if you don't trust that, you can always just go through and use the skills we've already learned to confirm that this is an S. You should be easy enough for you to confirm this is an S configuration, but that's really not necessary. We know that when the iodine was on the wedge, we had the R configuration, so now that we've made the swap, this must be the S configuration. So now we're done and we've accurately drawn what this stereo center looks like. Okay, so that's the basis of this method. You can see that it's um, quite easy to draw a stereo center that's consistent with any name. So the trick is don't try to figure out in your head what the S configuration looks like. Instead, just take a guess. Just take a guess as to what the stereo center looks like. 
Um, and probably you, sh you should make a guess that puts the number four priority on the dash, since that's the easiest to evaluate. After you make your guess, you can check it to see whether it, it came out to be what you wanted. In this case, we wanted it to be an S. And if it turns out that you guessed wrong and that you didn't get an S, there's no problem. Just make any single swap. And then you'll automatically have something that matches what the name was talking about. By the way, I should mention that there's many different ways of drawing an S stereo center, so it's possible that your picture doesn't look like my picture. Don't freak out if your picture doesn't look like my picture. It probably doesn't because there's many different ways of drawing um, S2 iodobutane. So how can you tell if you got it right? Well, whatever you think, um, whatever your final answer is, just use the skills that you um, got from the uh, earlier videos in the series to test whether you really got an S stereo center. Whatever your picture is, you should be able to, um, to now determine whether it really is R or S. So you'll be able to tell whether your picture is right. But you can't tell whether your picture is right just by comparing it with what I have on the board, um, because even if it doesn't match what I have on the board, it could still be right. There's many different ways to correctly draw an S stereo center. Because after all, there were many different swaps that we could have drawn here. And of course, there's other ways to draw S2 iodobutane. For example, you could have put the iodine on this carbon. You could have treated this carbon like the number two carbon. So um, you're going to have to do some work on your own to figure out whether the picture you made was correct or not. At this point, it should be easy for you to look at your picture and determine whether you correctly got it as R or S. Try to draw this molecule. Make sure that you draw the stereo center correctly. We have to draw hexane. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the number three carbon. Now, what are we going to put on the dash and the wedge? Well, we have to put in a bromine and a hydrogen. How do we know where to put the bromine and where to put the hydrogen to get an S? Well, we don't know. We're not going to try to figure out in our heads what the correct place to put the bromine and the hydrogen is. We're just going to take a guess. And again, the easiest guess is to guess that the hydrogen should be on the dash. It's always easiest to guess that the hydrogen is on the dash. So we'll put the bromine on the wedge. Now, since this was just a guess, we better check to see whether this is S or not. Bromine gets the number one priority. Hydrogen gets the number four priority. These two carbons are tied, and they're still tied when, when we make a list of the three atoms they're connected to. So we need to move those dots out. On the left, this carbon is attached to three hydrogens, and on the right, the carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. Now we have a point of difference. The first atom in the right-hand list is a carbon, and the first atom in the left-hand list is a hydrogen, so the right-hand list gets the higher priority. So here we get the number two, and on the left, we get the number three. Now we can erase our work. It's always a good idea to erase your work once you don't need it anymore. Now, we purposely get made a guess where the hydrogen was pointing away from us, so we can simply look at the configuration on the page. Uh, let's not draw these arrows. We don't need these arrows anymore. We're just going to complicate these. All right, so on the page, we have a S configuration. And there's no need to cross this out, because again, we've already purposely put the hydrogen over here. So the way we've drawn this, this is an S configuration. We've get, the way we guessed it, this would be an S, but that's what we wanted all along. So there's no point making any swaps. We don't need to make any changes. Our initial guess turned out to be correct. We guessed that the bromine would go on the wedge, and now we've confirmed that putting the bromine on the wedge does give us an S configuration. So now we've accurately drawn S3 bromohexane. So again, the method here is to draw the stereo center and take a guess as to what the stereo center should look like. Um, if your guess is correct, like it was here, you can just stick with that. But if it turned out that your guess was wrong, no problem, you could just make a swap, and then um, the picture would be correct. Remember that your picture might still be correct, even if it doesn't look like what I have on the board. So the only way to tell whether your picture is correct is to use the skills that you've acquired now to determine whether your picture actually, accurately shows an S stereo center.